Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I would like to share with you my thoughts on a book that I read and it's called The Passage by Justin Cronin. And Justin is an English professor at Rice in University. So when I read that in the back I was instantly intrigued because I always wonder about the writing styles of people who teach writing to others. Well, Justin's writing style and storytelling is superb. I truly enjoyed this book. And what is it about? Well, it's about the end of the world, basically. Uh, a lot happens in the first hundred pages. Uh, first, we meet Jeanette and her six-year-old daughter. And Jeanette is a single young mother who can't seem to catch a break in life. A lot of little things happening like that are never putting her in the right uh, path or on the, the right spot. Lots of little bad things and they just add up, add up, add up and eventually something big happens and she is separated from Amy forever. And in the next section we are taken to the jungles of Bolivia where Dr. Lear is on a medical research expedition and that expedition is funded by the military because the subject of it is a little bit controversial controversial and uh, not a lot of people obviously jumped on the bandwagon the trip in bolivia the it's a little bit uh, hard to follow simply because the only sense of what is happening is uh, through uh, dr lear's emails the whole section is basically dr lear uh, sending emails to his friend. So something's happening, things are going wrong, and we just get like a little bit of snippets of what it is. Uh, except for the last email, basically says, now I know why the military is here. So kind of suspenseful. Next, we meet Agent Wolfgast and his partner. Uh, Agent Wolfgast is uh, divorced because um, he was married, he was happily married, and they had a child together, a little daughter named Eva, but Eva developed heart problems very, on a, at a very early age, young age, and she died. And their marriage basically did not survive the death of their child. So now he is sort of nearing retirement, or th is thinking about retirement, he's not really old. Uh, but decides to take one last assignment because basically he has nothing better going on in his life. And this assignment is uh, going to state prisons and recruiting inmates that are on death row. Uh, so it's a little bit of a weird uh, offer that comes from him because on one hand the inmate is facing death but on the other hand he has this door number two where he gets life. But you makes you wonder what kind of life is it because obviously he has been judged and condemned and uh, death was his only option so it's a little bit uh, intriguing uh, and in that section we are going with doc uh, doctor we are going with agent Wolfcast to Texas where he meets an inmate named Carter but Carter is not like the other death row uh, death row inmate death row inmates for the fact that uh, he didn't commit the crime, so he. The, but there's no one there to basically defend him. He's unable to defend himself, so the justice system fails him. He's accused wrongly, and basically he is condemned to die for something he didn't do. Except, of course, that Agent Wolfgas is uh, has this gift of insight, and he knows uh, what to say to the inmates to have them choose them door number two uh, versus death, and he convinces uh, Carter to sign his contract. Agent Wolfgast is basically, uh, he thinks his assignment is done. He gets one last request to go pick up a six-year-old girl. And that girl is Amy. And uh, this throws him for a spin because, you know, having inmates sign this contract is different than having a six-year-old girl, basically kidnapping a six-year-old girl. And so, we are sort of, I'm not going to explain what happens in those few chapters, but uh, I, Wolfcast is basically torn between uh, obeying his assignment and bringing the girl, or just going with his gut and running with her. Uh, then we are taken to uh, a military compound in Colorado 
where once again we sort of meet or we understand that Dr. Lear is there, that's where his research has taken him, and that's where all the 12 inmates that Wolfgast had signed the contract are located. And basically, Dr. Lear is experimenting on them with the virus he brought from uh, Bolivia. And this virus turns uh, the inmates into vampires. So, uh, not the typical vampires, it's not Dracula, it's more of a vampire. If you've seen I Am Legend with Will Smith, along those lines. Um, the, uh, the, when we are explained, we are informed a little bit more about the research. Basically, Dr. Lear's idea of this research was that this virus, if modified correctly, will cure everything. Will cure AIDS and cancer and, you know, schizophrenia. There will be no diseases, there won't be even flus, and people will live long, healthy, productive lives. While the military sees this virus as a, a way to create super soldiers. So a little bit of a conflict of interest over there. Uh, but what happens is uh, one night uh, there's security breach and all the vampires, the 12 vampires, escape. Basically, the end of the world starts this uh, because within minutes there's several more vampires because the vampire either, although they're called virals, they, when they bite you, either they suck you dry and kill you, or you become like, like them. So within, you know, minutes, there's dozens, within hours, hundreds, and then thousands, and several thousands, and then millions, and America is basically gone. Because there's, the military cannot contain the epidemic, and it spreads rapidly. The vampires are sensitive to light. They, uh, they basically cannot stand it, it confuses them, and they're easily uh, subdued with bright light, and they stay away from bright light. Uh, they travel at night, they travel through trees, they are basically immune to any physical attack, but they have a sweet spot right between the, in the middle of the chest, where if you shoot them, they automatically drop dead. Uh, so there's a point in the book where we meet Ida, and Ida's writing her memoirs as a, of what her last days in the city of Philadelphia were, as the epidemic was just basically going out of control. And uh, it's really kind of heartbreaking reading her, her story and what happened and how she survived. And then there's sort of a time jump in the book because it's 100 years later, 98 years later, and we are in California in uh, somewhere called the First Colony. And the First Colony is basically a group of people who survived, who, who were saved, and they live in a colony surrounded by a wall, and uh, where the virals, where they can defend themselves from the virals. And we meet a lot of new characters there because obviously it's like a second generation of people, the original survivors are no longer there. So there's a gap of what the world was like because they could save only so much. They have uh, no computers, no TVs, and uh, they have light. The compound is surrounded by light that go on every single night to keep the virals away. But the lights run off batteries that charge during the day. However, since it's almost a uh, hundred years later, there are no factories that produce new batteries and batteries were never meant to be repaired, they were meant to be replaced. So it's only a matter of time before all the lights go out, and then what? And so the book gets really interesting, and uh, I don't think I'll tell you any more about it in case you want to read, but you know what happens to those people in that compound, who are they, and what kind of history they have, and how they organize themselves and how they survive on daily basis when there is no factories and no basically trade with the outside world and also what happened to America and uh, and Wolfcast and Amy and all those people we met in the early chapters. So I truly enjoyed this book, not only the writing, story, uh, the writing style and the story itself, uh, but also it has such a 
a human aspect to it. I mean, virals are sort of like fantastical, but in it's a sort of a, you know, apocalypse now, the end of the world. Uh, but it's also just the way it's written and the character development is really excellent. And, uh, you know, what happens when when your government fails you, your people that you think are here to protect you, basically create monsters and uh, and what do you do? Where do you turn? How do you hide? Who do you become? How do you survive? And uh, and I think uh, it's excellent, excellent writing, excellent, excellent storytelling. And uh, this is the first part. Right now I'm reading the second part, which is called The Twelfth. And uh, I'll do a little video on that as well once I read it. So highly recommended Justin Cronin's uh, The Passage. It's uh, a true page turner. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.